The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 194. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Bo Burlingham, author of Finish Big, How Great Entrepreneurs Exit Their Companies on Top. This was, uh, you know, every once in a while, I like to pop on here and, and tell you guys a little bit, you know, here in the preface about how how fantastic the book or the author is. And this is another individual that I'd like for you guys to check out. If you have an opportunity to to Google or look him up on Amazon, Bo has really been, uh, has written some fantastic books and been a part, co-authored uh, with some other fantastic books. Um, so, so please take the time to go on and, and check Bo out. At the end of the interview, he shares several different ways uh, that you can connect with him uh, or his different books. And, and those will all be in the show notes. But uh, without further ado, let's bring on Bo. Welcome, Bo, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Glad to be here, Wade. Before we take a deep dive into Finish Big, will you take just a moment to introduce yourselves? Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Yeah, I'm a editor at large at Inc. Magazine. I've actually been on the staff of Inc. Magazine for 32 years, um, 32 of its 35 years. Uh, and um, it's been quite a ride. Uh, I've written a few other books. Uh, I wrote two with Jack Stack, who's really the pioneer of open book management. One called The Great Game of Business was listed as one of the 100 best books of all time. Uh, I wrote a book called Small Giants, which was a uh, uh, companies that choose to be great instead of big. That was a finalist for the um Financial Times, Goldman Sachs uh, Business Book of the Year Award. Uh, I co-authored a book with Norm Brodsky called Street Smarts. Uh, that's actually the name of the paperback. The, it had a different name as a hardback. Um, and my latest book is, uh, is this one, Finish Big, How Great Entrepreneurs Exit Their Companies on Top. So well, I think one of the most impressive things, uh, not that I try and wrap up a whole lot into Amazon and Amazon reviews, because that's one of the reasons why we started the podcast was, you know, sometimes there's one or two reviews and one's from someone's mom and the other one's from someone who, uh, who kind of hates, hates life. So I try not to put too much into that, but, but when there's, uh, numerous reviews and they're all fantastic, uh, I, it definitely makes me pay attention. And every single one of those books you just mentioned and others, uh, have phenomenal the phenomenal amounts of reviews and uh, and ratings. You know, as far as four and a half, five stars, which is very difficult to do when you're not talking about. Yeah, it, again, if if I guess if I wrote a book and I had my mom get on there and I got one review and it's a five star, but uh, uh, excellent, excellent reviews on all these different books on Amazon. Well, uh, I'm very flattered by that. So, um, it it it's you know it's the reason you write a book is that you hope people will like it. So. Mm. <laughs> no, that, that's fantastic. And now let's jump right into uh, this most recent one, Finish Big, okay. mm -hmm. How Great Entrepreneurs Exit Their Companies on Top, which was uh, made available not that long ago, actually November of 2014. And But we're going to move quickly. But our whole right. goal here today is to cover the top questions that our, our, our listeners slash future reader would like to get answered. Okay. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Finish Big? Well, it really began with my... Uh, Sometime co-author Norm Brodsky, uh, I've been writing a column with him in Inc. Magazine for almost 20 years now, and he and I did write the book Street Smarts together. Uh, in Back in 2006, he decided to sell his company, and he and I decided to write about it on a month-by-month -month, uh, basis. And we just got a tremendous amount of reader response. I mean, we were just flooded with emails, people suggesting what he should do. And I realized that there was this uh, huge appetite out there uh, for understanding what was the experience of selling a company. And I, we actually hadn't written very much, even though I'd been at Inc. for 26 years or whatever at that point. Uh, we seldom written about um, the exit process. And so I was actually very curious about it. Um, I realized pretty quickly I didn't know much about it. Um, and 
uh, that's really what led me into doing the book. That's fantastic. And, and this next question is really to help differentiate because we talk about all the time, entrepreneurs are inundated with books. Uh, 150, 200 plus books a month come out on Amazon alone on entrepreneurship. And so this next question is, what makes your book different from the others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, that was actually one of the reasons that I wrote the book as well, that I did enough uh, online. If you, if you go online and you look at any other aspect of a business, starting a business, growing a business, financing a business, uh, managing uh, a business and so forth, you, you, you do a Google search on them. You'll get several million uh, uh, hits. Uh, if, you, if you go to exiting a business, you'll get about – somewhere between a fifth and a tenth of that amount. Mm. And what's more, all of those, almost all of those, I would say even all of them, are really about how do you get the best deal for your business. In other words, it's about the financial part of the, uh, uh, of the equation. Uh, what I realized from Norm and then from the interviews that I did was, you know, the financial part is important. It's important to get rewarded for what you did, but really – the biggest challenges are emotional, not financial. And a lot of them come after the actual deal is done. And people are generally unprepared for them. So uh, I don't know, frankly, of any book out there uh, on exits, which is like mine in the sense that it's really all about the experiences of people who've gone through it. And what, you know, what their experience is, is good and bad. And there's both good and bad in the book. Fantastic. So, Bo, this next question was actually one that came from an author, uh, David Allen of Getting Things Done. I asked him what, what question we were missing from this interview. And he said, you should ask how, uh, how, how the author suggests the reader engage with the book. And meaning, I guess we're going to ask you that same thing. Did you write it so that people can jump in and jump out, cherry picking information as needed? Or did you really write it to be read from front to back? Well, I, you can read it either way. And I tried to set it up so that people could jump in or jump out if they wanted to. They could look at the table of contents. They could look at the headlines and subheads. And, uh, and, and they could do that if they wanted to. Uh, I will say that I think very few entrepreneurs will do that. I think most people, once they start the book, are going to want to read it completely through. Uh, and I say that because um, it exposes uh, – if you, were, if you were an entrepreneur, even if you're just an aspiring entrepreneur, it exposes you to a whole side of business and a way of thinking about business that you're not used to. And it will it'll immediately uh, lead you to ask – to, to wonder about many, many things. And there are things you should be thinking about from a very, very early stage of your business. Mm. So, but we're, we're to my favorite part of the entire book. I mean, you've given us a great background and some purpose behind the book. So now let's take a deep dive into the content itself. Uh, we take the next five to eight minutes and really give the future reader a great idea of what they can expect to get out of your book. Sure. Now, the, I guess the thing I would emphasize is that this is a book with stories. Uh, it's like most of most of the books that I've written. Uh, they, they're about story. They have stories of entrepreneurs. Uh, each story has a point. It's not just a collection of stories, but what the, the whole idea of the book and what you will find throughout the book uh, is stories of uh, real people having real experiences in exiting. Uh, their businesses or getting ready to exit their businesses. The introduction is the story of how the book came to be written. Uh, talks about what I referenced earlier. Um, and one of the things I found, I mean, I interviewed dozens and dozens and dozens of entrepreneurs uh, to find out what their experiences had been uh, in going through an exit. And what I found was that about half of them were reasonably happy at the end of the process, and about half of them were totally miserable and wished that they'd never sold their business, had, were just full of regrets, uh, and, you know, were living with them. And so I asked, uh, well, okay, what's the difference between a good exit and a bad exit? And in order to do that, I had to define what a good exit was. 
And I came up with uh, five uh, qualities of a good exit. One is that at the end of the process, you can you feel as though you've been fairly treated and appropriately rewarded for the work that you did in uh, building the business. Number two, you have a sense of accomplishment. You can look back with pride uh, on what you did when you had the business. Number three, you're at peace with what has happened to the other people who were on the journey with you. Uh, number four, you have a new sense of purpose outside the business. And for some people, not for all, but for some people, uh, it's important to, be, to see that the company is uh, still thriving without them uh, in the driver's seat. Um, chapter one is really the story. It begins with the story of a very good exit. Um, and uh, I really want people to have an idea of what the book is going to be about. And, you know, the title of the chapter is Every Journey Ends. And I'm really saying to people here, you need to think about your your experience as the owner of a business as a journey. And it's something, it's a journey that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And building a company is not the end of that business. That's the middle of the business. The end of the business is when you leave that company. Um, the other thing I want people to understand is, you know, most of us think of an exit as an event that, you know, eventually happens at some point in the life of a business. Uh, I realized as I got into this that that's the wrong way to look at it. An exit is actually a phase of the business. You know, you have the startup phase, you have the growth phase, you have the maturity phase, and you have the exit phase. And there are actually four stages to that uh, to that phase of the business. Uh, the first one is what I call the exploratory phase. It's when you are really um, educating yourself about what the possibilities are. Um, the second one is the strategic phase. That's when you have an idea of the kind of exit you want and you go about building into your company the qualities that are going to allow you to have that kind of an exit. The third phase is the execution phase. That's when you actually go out and look for a buyer. Most people start at the third phase without going through phases one and two, and it's a huge mistake. Uh, you know, they, 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 they put off doing the necessary preparatory work. At a certain point, they realize they're not going to live forever or they want to go on and do something else or they're bored, and they go and call up a broker or a uh, uh, or an investment banker, the wrong way, total wrong way to do it. And then the fourth phase is actually the most uh, difficult, and that's the transition phase. That's after you've sold the business, what happens between the sale of the business and whatever comes next, uh, whatever is the next thing that you're going to be totally engaged in. Um and when I looked at the difference between the good and the bad companies, the good and bad exits, I mean, um, many people with good companies had bad exits, unfortunately. Uh, I came up with uh, seven factors, and I really structured so – seven and a half factors, and I really structure the book around those factors. Um, and so chapter two is – is titled, Who Am I if, if Not My Business? And it's about the importance of knowing who you are, what you want, and why. This is something that I have found over and over again in all the years that I've been covering entrepreneurs, those who do best in terms of building a business and who do best in terms of exiting business have worked very hard on trying to figure out who they are, what they want, and why. Uh, the truth is, is that if you put that off, if you don't think about it, uh, as soon as you're actually, you're going to, you're going to run smack into that question and there's going to be no way to avoid it. The, the second, that was, that's the first factor separating the people with good exits from bad exits. The second factor has to do with building a company that's sellable. And what I mean by that is one you can sell when you want, to whom you want, at a price you want. Um, 
there's some, something called a forced sale. That happens when something you totally don't foresee comes along. You've got a very good company, and then all of a sudden something happens that catches you by surprise, and you're forced to sell either to who, not when you want or to somebody you don't want to sell to, and you often get a very bad deal um, afterwards. Uh, so it's very important to understand what a sellable business is. And I do write about uh, the eight factors that sort of go into it and also what you can learn, other places you can go to learn about building a sellable business. The third factor has to do with time. Um, most people do not give, most business owners do not give themselves anywhere near enough time to do the preparatory work. And when I talk about time, I'm talking in terms of uh, years, not months. Uh, the fact is there's no point too early to start at least the exploratory phase. Uh, you can do that even before you even uh, start the company. Uh, but the, 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 the big mistake that people make is that they don't give themselves enough time. Uh, and I tell various stories about um, people to, to give you a clear sense of exactly what the amount of time you need is. And I will say this is that the more ambitious you are for your company, the more you care about having it last beyond you, the more time you're going to need uh, to prepare for your exit. Uh, the, 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 the next point is really sort of related to um, the having enough time. And that's for some people, it's important to have a successor, not for everybody when they sell their company, but for a lot of people, it's important to have a successor and you need a lot of time to get the right accessor successor. In fact, you need to give yourself enough time to be wrong because practically everybody gets it wrong the first time and they learn some lessons. And then if they're lucky and good, they're able to, to do it the next time. Um, chapter, the chapter six, which is actually the fifth, uh, excuse me, the fourth point, um, it has to do with making sure that you get the advice you need. And I make a very strong case in here for uh, making sure that you have a guide who has been through it himself or herself before. Um, they have a perspective on it that is different from uh, this perspective you will get from an exit professional, an m and attorney or uh, an investment ba banker or broker. Uh, because they know that, 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 that the exit doesn't end with the deal. Uh, for the investment banker, the broker, the deal is it. Once it's over, they go on to something else. It's not over for the business owner, and you need somebody guiding you who understands that. Uh, a lot of people do that by making the big mistake of they learn the hard way by uh, doing their own exits and screwing everything up. Uh, but they are often, oddly enough, uh, turn out to be the best guides. Um, the next factor, the fifth factor, uh, has to do with what happens to the other people who you've been on the journey with. Nobody builds a company alone. Uh, and you need to be at peace with whatever is going to happen to your employees, to your investors, to whoever else has been with you on the journey. If you do not pay attention to that, you will live to regret it. I mean, I tell a story there of somebody who, who couldn't talk about his exit 12 years after he left his company because he felt so bad about the way he'd handled his employees. It's something that is critical to pay attention to. The sixth factor uh, is uh, a chapter I call caveat vendator. In other words, let the seller beware. When you're selling a business, it's easy to forget that, that the buyer is also selling themselves. They're selling themselves that they're going to be a good owner of the company, that they're going to take good care of it, that, they're going to, that they love your employees, that they love everything that they do, that they think you're the most brilliant person in the world and they really want to 
they, they really w- want to keep doing it. Most of them are lying, frankly, uh, because they want to they want to own the business. And it's very important to understand really why the buyer wants your business and to look at it in a cold, unemotional way, because otherwise you're absolutely setting yourself up for big, unpleasant surprises after you sell the business. And the final part, the the final chapter is really, it's over the rainbow. It's after the sale itself. And that is the hardest part of this, because uh, what happens, I realize, I mean, there's one person who I write at the beginning of the chapter about, it took him 15 years to figure out why he felt so bad after he'd sold his business. In the end, he wound up writing a PhD dissertation on the subject of owners who sell private businesses and what their experiences have been. Um, And I realized in writing this chapter that, you know, there are a lot of things that people get out of their businesses that they're not aware of until they don't have them anymore. For example, a sense of purpose. Uh, an identity, a tribe, people who they see every day and work with every day, um, uh, a, a, a sense of accomplishment. One of the great things about business is that you can see your what exactly you're accomplishing as you go along. Structure, in other words, knowing what you should do next. When you suddenly don't have any of those things, if you haven't prepared yourself adequately, you feel totally lost. The people who have really good exits figure out how to get them back. And usually because they have money now after they've sold their business, they're able to get it back and to do what they did before at a higher level. So what did they do before? Well, when you think about it, your sense of purpose in business comes from the people you serve. Everybody who has a successful business serves other people. You at least serve your customers because you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be successful if you didn't. You're probably serving your family as well. For a lot of people, they're serving their employees. Uh, you're serving your community as well, um, and it's that sense of service that gives every makes gives everything else that you're doing uh, meaning. And when you lose that. It's very important, and the people who go through the exit and wind up on top of the world, not only with their money, but feeling great about what they're doing, are people who figure out how to recreate that sense of service afterwards. Uh, and that's really that. That's really where we wind up with the book. That was the big discovery I made in uh, in writing the book. But you did a fantastic job of breaking down. Uh, that book, and you did great on timing as well, uh, putting that much information. And that's what leads us to this next question as well, is you, you, you did. You just gave us a ton of great uh, content with context along with it. And it's, So this question, I think, is fairly difficult sometimes. It's, if the reader could only take away one concept, principle, or action item out of everything you just discussed with us, out of your entire book, what would you want that to be? Well, if it was only one thing, I would say that you need to start preparing for it early. There is no point that's too early to start preparing for this, to start thinking about this. And when I say to start thinking about it, I mean starting the exploratory phase. In other words, figuring out uh, what are the different possibilities? What are the ways this can go? And, and, and developing a vision for yourself about where you want it to go. If you were to give me a second one, I would say, Uh, It's this question of service. Understand how important that is to you as a business owner. Um, Because really, there is so much that that grows out of that, um, that it really gives you uh, a a North Star. It guides you uh, as you go as a business owner and also as a former business owner. So, Bo... There's been so many quote-worthy things. I mean, there was a couple of quote-worthy things that you just got done saying uh, in, in that last question. That actually leads to our, our last question over the book. And that's, do you have a favorite quote from your book? And can you take a minute to explain what it means to you? Yeah. 
I would say <clears throat> there's a saying that you should build your business as if it's going to last forever, but you could sell it tomorrow. That quote, that saying uh, contains a lot of very, very important information. You build a business as if you were building it for the ages, as if it was going to last long beyond you, but you could sell it tomorrow. In other words, now, the reason is that if you prepare correctly for your exit and you do the necessary work, it's not only that you'll have a better exit, you'll have a better company because you'll have a company. One of the things that forces preparing for the exit forces you to do it, it, it forces you to look at your company the way an, uh, an independent investor who has absolutely no emotional ties to the business would look at it and you the, and you'd look at the kind of practices you need to implement in order to have that kind of a company the result is that you'll have a better company uh, you'll have a better company that's more valuable for you to own if you plan to to give it or to sell it or turn it over to your children it'll be better for them if you plan to sell it to your employees it'll be better for them uh, if you plan to just sell it to a third party, you'll get a better price for it. So, um, you know, that's really, really the the kernel of the idea um, that needs to drive you not only in terms of preparing for an exit, but in terms of building a great business. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. And we'll put that in the show notes. A lot of our uh, listeners are mobile right now, and they'd like to reflect on that a little bit more so they can go to the EL podcast.com and, and further uh, uh, think about that quote. And and Bo, uh, this next question is obviously as a book centric podcast, we have to ask and and uh, the book uh, lovers out there are always looking for, for that recommendation, but we're not asking for just any uh, suggestion. We're asking for the suggestion. So if there's only one book you could recommend to our listeners based on the way that it's impacted your life, created, you know, a lifestyle shift or a, or a paradigm shift for you, uh, what book would you recommend? I was thinking about this question. Uh, it's actually not a business book. That's fine. Uh, I, I was thinking, well, there are a number, but I, I, I was thinking The Killer Angels, um, which is the story of the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, and it's a very, very well-told story. It's a very exciting story. And it's about courage under fire. Um, and... If there's a, a book that had a profound effect on me, it was that one. Uh, and really realizing, you know, it was the turning point of the Civil War, which really sort of defined the United States thereafter. And, you know, I believe that, you know, business is a way to make the world a better place. It's a way to create a better and a stronger com country. And uh, I think that understanding where our country comes from is extremely important. And that was Killer Angels? Yes. Killer Angels. Okay, I just looked that up. Fantastic. You know, that's the first time I've had that book recommended. Um, <laughs> however, the popularity I'm, I'm looking is is unbelievable. So I'm surprised that's even the first time I've heard of it. Thank you so much for that recommendation. I can't wait to, uh, to purchase that it. and dive in. You will love it, Wade. I can guarantee it. Very good. Well, Bo, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also get more information on your book, Finish Big? Yeah, I have a website. Uh, if you go to www.boburlingham.com, there's a bunch of information there. Um, you can also go to the website for, um, my book, small giants, which is www.smallgiantsbook.com. Um, and the website for street smarts, my book with Norm Brodsky, which is actually, even though it's called street smarts now, it was originally called the knack and the website is the knack dot info. Um, they're all loaded with information. Um, and I would also recommend that people, there, there are two organizations that I'd like to uh, point people to. One has to do with my book, Small Giants, which gave birth 
Actually, I've got three. The, my, my book, Small Giants, gave birth to an organization called the Small Giants Community. You can find it at uh, www.smallgiants.org. It's full of companies that really uh, identify with the whole Small Giants idea. I wrote the book uh, with Jack Stack called The Great Game of Business, which is about the practice of open book management, which I believe is the, is the most important innovation in management uh, of the last 50 or 60 years. Um, and they have a, there's an organization called The Great Game of Business, uh, and you, you can look that up online and see uh, and learn a lot about companies that have adopted this way of running themselves. Um, and finally, there's a group in Chicago called Evolve. I write about them in the book. Uh, they have taken the book and they're using it to build what I believe is going to be an extremely important organization, sort of like Vistage, but Vistage for people or EO, but uh, Vistage or EO for people who are thinking about exiting, are in the process of exiting, or have exited their businesses. Um, you can read about them in, in, in Finish Big. Uh, if you want to get in touch with them, go to evolveusa.org. Very good. Well, Bo, you just gave us a ton of great, uh, I guess, different ways of, of, of learning more about you and your books. And and for those listening, we're going to put every single bit of those links on the show notes, thealpodcast.com. So don't worry if you miss something, you can always go there, jump on, uh, and we'll have that, that link readily available for you. And Bo... Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. Well, it's been my pleasure, Wade, and thank you for what you're doing with the Entrepreneur's Library. I think it's a real service. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Bo or his book, Finish Big, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And if you want an opportunity to win his book, Finish Big, uh, check out the elpodcast.com and become a VIP. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.